Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So today we're going to be reviewing an iBlades smartphone case. You may wonder, why am I reviewing a case? So when did this become a fashion or cosmetics channel or any? I don't give a shit what the case looks like. This channel used to be about function over form. Why do I care about this? Well, this case is about function. And we'd love this, this to get into what this thing can do. This case allows you to add battery life to your phone. It also allows you to add a micro SD card slot to your phone. So it's trying to make up for the fact that most modern flagship phones suck. So for those of you who are younger in the audience, you may forget that smartphones actually gave you some uh, element of user freedom. If you wanted more storage, they came with a micro SD card slot, so you could plug in something called a micro SD card and get more memory. This here is one terabyte, and it's actually pretty fast. You plug it in your phone, you get somewhere around like 80, 90 megabytes per second read and write. It's more than enough for your photos, your videos, your music, just to be able to show it to your friends. And you could just put it in the phone, and now you've expanded your phone that came with 64 gigabytes into a terabyte without having to pay the manufacturer an additional three to $600 to get their memory in the phone. Even if you're willing to pay the manufacturer for their flagship device, you're usually only gonna get 500 gigabytes nowadays, which means if you were used to having this much storage in your phone, now you have to pay them for their cloud storage as well as paying them an additional amount of money for their expensive flagship with more storage, which means that if you're in an area with low service, well, I guess now you can't access your files, but they get more money. When it comes to things like the headphone jack, you used to get phones that came with a headphone jack, but the problem with that is that if the phone comes with a headphone jack, then you're not gonna give Apple or Samsung or Fairphone their additional one to $200 for their Galaxy Buds or their Fairphone Buds or the Ear AirPods or whatever the fuck they make nowadays that are a disposable trash that after a year or two when the battery goes out, there's no batteries in the market and no way to fix them. You're not gonna do that if you actually have a headphone jack in the device. And when it comes to the battery, man, you're, you're gonna be less likely to try and talk yourself into getting the shiniest new device if when your battery dies, instead of going boop and popping a new one in, you have this bullshit glued back onto the phone that a lot of people wind up breaking or destroying as they try to get to their battery. A lot of people are looking for a reason to be a, con a consumer. They want a reason to justify buying the latest shit. And if you give them an excuse by making it harder to work on the device, that is what you get. So what this case is looking to do is they're looking to give you the ability to add battery life to your phone as well as give you the ability to add storage back to your phone. Now, with a lot of modern phones, if you want, you can plug a USB drive in. Like This will show up on this phone. This is a USB-C drive from Framework. This is 256, 250 gigabytes, and they make them all the way up to a terabyte. The problem here is obvious. This is not really ergonomically proper, and if, you know, if this is in my pocket and I pick it up and this bends, I'm gonna break the drive or the port. This is really not aesthetically pleasing in any way, shape, or form. Who wants to walk around with a phone like this, and even if it was not gonna break, and this most certainly will break if you use it like that. The other thing is, you can you get these type of battery cases like this one. This is a new dairy. This is kind of a piece of shit. They're massively lying, in my opinion, about the milliamp hour capacity of this particular case. If, but the other issue is the, the thickness of it. Even if you don't need the battery, the battery is there, which is some, this is not gonna be able to fit properly into a car mount or a bike mount, or you know, a lot of people, they only want to attach the battery to their phone when they need it. This is a case, but the battery's always in it. So this is a case over here where it, not only will it add battery life, but the battery is modular to the case, and you can also add a micro SD card slot to it. And I would like to show you it all today. Now, before I get started with this, I need to mention my bias. I despise the company behind this. I do not think they are good people. I do not think they run a good business. I asked them for a tracking number since I didn't receive a tracking number and I looked in my spam email and I did not see any tracking, anything in my spam. So I emailed them and asked for a tracking number and they ignored me. So I emailed them again and I get a response back asking for an order number, which I think is pretty lazy. All you have, like, again, I run an online e-commerce business. I have done that for 13 years. Somebody emails me and says, hey, do you have a tracking number for my order? And they emailed me from the email that they placed the order with. What I would do is I would take their name, copy and paste it and see, oh, look, it looks like the last somebody you ordered yesterday has the same name as you. Let me respond with your tracking number. No, they ask for the order number, I give them the order number, I don't hear back for a while. So I email them again, and they say, okay, we should, we, you should have gotten an automated email with this. As if the reason I was contacting you in the first place was because I didn't get your automated fucking email. It took me weeks of back and forth to actually get a tracking number from these people. But the worst part is anytime you email them, expect to be ignored for two to five days after you've given them money. 
It is consistent. It's not like a one-time thing. And it's something I wouldn't be so mad at if I didn't spend time running my own e-commerce business by myself, even when I was getting several hundred orders a day, to realize that it really takes a minimal amount of effort to just go into your shipping software, copy and paste the person's name, and then copy and paste in their goddamn tracking number. So I don't think that they run a good business, and I really would um, strongly advise against giving people like this money because they, they show a distaste for their customer that I think is disgusting as somebody who's had to run this type of business before. So there's going to be some salt that, that, that makes its way into this review. So I figure I should make that obvious up front so that you don't wonder why I may be exceptionally salty about this. So this is the case and it comes with some Enviro sensor. I don't give a fuck about the environment sensor. I don't give two shits of a fuck about any of that stuff that's probably just going to waste battery. Oh, I got this thing because I wanted the extended battery for live streaming, and I also wanted the ability to have a micro SD card slot in my phone. So this is the case. I got one for the Pixel 4a 5G. They don't make one for the Pixel 6 Pro, which is sad, but let's see how this thing works. So the first thing I was curious is where does the micro SD card plug into? Because on the website, as with most modern product photos nowadays, the product photos are useless and don't show you what you actually want to see. So it looks like this attaches with some sort of uh, magnetic contact over here. And uh, so, okay, so the, the first issue that I have with this device is that the micro SD card slot is on the battery. It is not on the case. So even though I'm not always gonna wanna have the battery attached to the phone, I'm always gonna wanna have the case attached to the phone. And this is something that wasn't made clear on the website or in any of the pictures. So I'm, oh, I'm, I could imagine always wanting the case attached to my phone. Like when would I not want the case in my phone? But I'm, I'm almost always gonna want the, I, I may not always want an additional fat battery in there. And I most certainly can't imagine, you know, why you would put the micro SD card slot on the battery and not on this. Because that means, let's say I have three of these, right? Let's say I have one or two or three of these batteries and one of them dies. Now, when I switch out the battery and I put a new battery on my phone, that means that I now have to take the micro SD card slot out and put it back into this. Uh, the other thing is this attaches with magnets and these contacts don't appear to lift a lot off of the device. They appear to be very flush. And I'm, I'm kind of concerned that I know, this, this, this seems a little... Yeah, this, this, in my, this seems janky. I can completely imagine this disconnecting on a regular basis. And yeah, again, so you're holding the phone by the battery when you do this. There's nothing that wraps around this. So you're ho essentially you're holding the phone by the battery, which is held onto here by magnets, which is also utilizing those contacts for data transfer from a micro SD card. So like if I do, um, this seems like it's going to disconnect like crazy. Again, that's just... Uh, let's see if that's a bias or not that I so I'm gonna put my micro SD card in here this is from my DJI I am not sure if they use the same file system but we'll see if I can actually view any of the files on here so let's just go over here and see if it shows up and eh. okay so I don't see anything yet so let's see maybe you got to turn this thing on or something is it possible that I'm supposed to turn this thing on? Aha, okay, we have a switch on the bottom. What's this? Okay, we, turn, we have a switch. And is there a light or anything that comes? Okay, I see a light comes on when I turn on the switch. So the case has to be switched on. Okay, now we look at my storage. I'm just going to go into my storage settings on my phone. Give me a moment. Okay, storage manager. Yeah, so it only shows it only shows one drive plugged in. It does not show that I've plugged in another drive at all. Um, that's interesting. So right off the bat, let's just see if I got this right. So this, so it's got these little indentations over here. We do this. Okay, rotate it over. And I don't see shit. And it does look like it's on. Now, is there another switch I got to put on the phone or something? Okay. Hmm. Okay, let's see if it comes with a manual. Maybe I should read the manual. It's possible I'm missing something because I have not read a manual. 
this piece of yeah, styrofoam. Okay, in order to access phone or iBlade through the iBlade Smart App, pixel default setting to be changed. In order to access phone or blade storage through the iBlade Smart App, pixel default settings need to be changed. Uh, now this is strange. The reason I find this strange is because I do not need to be a special person to be able to access a USB-C drive. So let me just give you that, show you that as an example. I'm just going to take this phone out of the case. Now if I plug USB-C storage in here, uh, I really should edit this, but I have a feeling I'm going to be lazy and not edit it. Yeah, I have a feeling I'm going to, sorry if that winds up being the case. Okay, so I'm going to take this and plug it in so you can see the difference. So storage, I plug in a USB-C drive. <clears throat> St this device, USB drive. See that? So when I plug in a USB-C device, any sort of mass storage device, it just works. There's no reason to change shit in settings over it. And even if it's corrupted, it would give me the option to format it. So immediately, I'm skeptical of this piece of shit. Okay, but as I said, I'm a little salty. Okay, let, let's, so let's see, what, what do you, and there's no way in hell I'm installing an app for this. There's, there's no excuse, this should be plug and play. So let's see, they say they want me to ensure developer options, scroll down, turn on USB debugging. Okay, so let's do this. It's up in the manual all the way too. So, so settings, build number seven times. Okay. System. Developer options. USB debugging. Allow USB debugging. And we go to default USB configurations and select file transfer. File transfer, there we go. Okay, that's done. Now I may switch this off. And on again. The light, also the indicator light here really sucks. Like you see how the indicator light is hidden under there? Like if you're out in the sun, good, good luck seeing that shit. Okay, so let's see if it sees the storage now. So I go to storage. And after I go to storage, it still doesn't show me anything, which is bullshit. Okay, so I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt that that SD card just literally, it literally died in the amount of time it took for me to take it out of my DJI and put it into here. Uh, let's see if that's the case. Maybe that's what, maybe that happened. So I'm going to take that and put it back in my DJI and then I'm going to take an SD card out of this Samsung phone because I know that I'm going to see if it works in here and then plug it in there and see if it sees anything. So let's, okay, so let's unplug this SD card. I'm going to plug it into this DJI camera. at the time, I don't have a battery plugged in here. And when I do this, that's a bike video in New York City. It's so nice to not be in New York City anymore, isn't it? Now you may say, well, Lewis, the file system is wrong, blah -de blah -de blah Even if there was an issue with the file system, there is no reason for it to not be giving me the option to format the card. But just because I know there's gonna be a naysayer, I'm gonna grab another SD card that I know works in this phone and see what happens. So first thing I got to do is demonstrate that on my Samsung S10e, I actually have a working SD card. One second, I'm just going to grab a pin so that I can push it out of here.
Okay. So first thing we got to do is show that this actually works by showing you the files that are on this phone. So I go to my files. I'm a true scumbag if I don't edit this video. I'm just gonna put that up front right here right now. If I actually make you guys wait through this, then I'm just I'm just such a shit YouTuber at that point. I don't deserve you all as viewers. But I have a feeling I'm gonna actually do that to you. I have a feeling I'm gonna be that lazy. Okay, here we go. So we have internal storage, and then we have SD cards. So it sees 0.93 terabytes, 83% used. So clearly what I have in this device is a working SD card. So we're just gonna try another one, just because, just to make sure there can be no peanut gallery, no angry peanut gallery at me. So I'm gonna get the SD card out of this phone. It's kind of stuck in there. Jesus Christ. Remember when this used to just put the pin in there and it would just kind of pop right out? Those are the days. Holy moly, what the F did I do to this thing? Dear God. Okay, one sec. Let me see if I have another pin. Now you know that we're doing it live. Okay, I thought I had another pen. I guess I don't. Okay, so we're gonna make this one work. We're gonna make this one work. Or else. This phone has been through, this little Samsung phone here has been through absolute hell, so I'm not surprised that this doesn't want to come out. Can you believe this? We, cl we purport to be a data recovery company. I can't get the SIM card tray out of a phone. This is embarrassing. That is some stuck shit. Mother. Am I losing my mind? It's not supposed to be that hard. Let's see. I think I'm losing my mind. I hope I'm not, but... Okay. This is my Pixel 4a 5G. You put the, oh, and it pops right out. So, okay, I'm not losing my mind. Something's fine. This is what fingernails are for, by the way. This is why people in the repair industry almost never cut their fingernails, because, man, it, it really is the savior in moments like that. Okay, so we're gonna take this other one terabyte micro SD card slot. And this, this case over here is going to get another chance, another redeeming chance. Let's see what it can do. Okay. We will turn the case on and off again. Off, on. And the last thing that I will do is I will see if installing their app does anything. All right, as you can see, it still doesn't see shit in my phone. Yeah, it doesn't see either, either card. Okay. I would try giving it a reboot since they suggest giving it a reboot in the manual. Now, again, as I, as I mentioned, with 
Frameworks USB storage device, there is no rebooting necessary. It is as hot swappable as it should be. And the fact that this is not hot swappable is kind of, it's, it's lame. Because you have, you have to keep in mind that this, that the micro SD card portion of this is built into the battery. It's not built into the case. So if you decide to swap out this battery because this battery ran out and you want to charge another one, that means you have to reboot your phone every time you do that, which is really shitty, but one way to find out, right? So let's see. So we go to storage. I have rebooted the phone and it still only sees internal storage. It is not showing me the rest. Am I missing some, like really? Okay, I'll, I'll give it one more reboot. I'll give it one more reboot. Yeah, if they want me to install an app to use this, they can go suck my balls. But. Okay, so we did all this shit already. Developer options, like file transfer, press me, and restart the phone. Okay, so I'm gonna give it one more restart. Oh, did you see that? When I picked the phone up off the desk, this thing actually, the, the magnet came loose. So I went to pick it up off the desk like this, and this happened, just naturally from my hands. Okay, let's, let's try this again. So it says charging device connected via USB. So I'm gonna click this, use USB for file transfer as selected. Settings, storage, Okay, so not only is this not, um, not only is this piece of shit not actually uh, showing the storage, but it's also not charging at all either. Okay, maybe, maybe they sent it to me dead. It's possible that a company that's stupid enough this, to not be able to give me a tracking number for several weeks or respond to an email is also stupid enough to not actually give me the thing charged. So what happens if I plug it in? Let's see, maybe that'll do something. This is a framework charger, by the way. Now, the framework charger doesn't work with some uh, counterfeit or shitty, not counterfeit, like non-USB-C compliant stuff. So for instance, this case over here is not USB-C power delivery compliant. So it can only charge with a normal USB charger, not a USB-C charger, even though it comes with a USB-C port. However, this is cheap Chinese garbage that costs $39 or 34 bucks. This thing cost me over $100. So if this doesn't work with this, then no, you fuck out of here. So let's see, does this work? Nope, it's not charging. Yeah, okay. Actually, it ships with a USB-C to USB-C cable, so it has to be USB-C compliant. So let's see, what happens if I do this? What hap like, does this port here actually function? Let's say, yeah, there's a USB-C port on this. Let's see, does it see that storage that I plugged into it? So I plug this into this. To this thing. It does not. It does not. Okay. And you can see the thing's on. It's got the three lights over there. So my conclusion is as follows. This is a steaming piece of shit. This is as bad as I could expect to get from a company that has no customer service, no customer support, that can't be bothered to reply to an email for three days. This is exactly what you expect from the type of company that can't reply to an email for tracking in three days. This is a complete and utter pile of shit in my opinion. And while this had a lot of hope to be a decent product, it seems to be put together like shit in every possible way. Again, if you're creating some sort of USB-C uh, storage product like this, literally like, watch. Again, you go storage. It's supposed to be really easy, really plug and play. Like you do this, you plug the storage in. Three, two, one. Bada bing, it refreshes, you get a drop down menu, and it sees the USB device, and that's not something that, th 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 this thing just sucks. So, screw this, screw this company, screw the shitty way that they treat their customers, and screw this really poorly put together design. I mean, like, again, there's this whole magnet shit that you have over here, like, I literally, while I was picking it up like this, while I was picking it up, I've separated it. Like, look at this. Like, again, it, it, it it jiggles. It freaking jiggles. Like, fuck this. This is horrible.
It's such a cool concept. It's just, it was so poorly implemented. Anyway, that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'm going to be filing a PayPal claim on this and sending it back because God knows I'm not going to hear back from the refund department if I don't even hear back on a damn tracking number. And I will see you all later. I really had high hopes for this. This was like the solution to the modern phone that does not have a micro SD card slot. And uh, I mean, you never know. They could have, they, like if they really ran with this concept, not only could they have given you back a user removal battery, not only could they have given you back your, your uh, micro SD card slot, but they could have even given you back your headphone jack. If this was done properly, you could have had everything back. But oh well, what are you gonna do? Hopefully somebody watching this realizes that there is actually a market for something like this and that there are nutbags like me that are actually desperate enough that they will spend 100 to $150 just to have this functionality back in a modern smartphone, even if it doesn't include the headphone jack and does this, implements this idea properly. I'm gonna box this back up so I can send it back. That's it for today. And as always, hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.